Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here and welcome to another RPG Maker tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a summon for the game, for the obviously in, in the battle scene and it's going to be done along the same lines as Final Fantasy 9 and before and there is a way to do a Final Fantasy 10 style summon which does require a script to be able to do. Uh, I've looked into it, I know it exists, I've not I'm not, not planning on doing a video on it, but it is out there if you want to go and research that. So that does exist. So this ones are just going to be sort of like a throwaway, you know, animation rather than a one-off, you know, as a one-off skill move rather than an extra party member. Okay, so now what you need to do, or the first thing you need to do, is make sure that you have the picture of the summon ready. Any animations that you want to use for the attack and also any sound effects that you're planning to use as well for the or music for the animation also. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you need to go into your resource manager. Now, I don't believe that that is actually showing it on here so let me just add that in so that I can show you exactly what you've opened. So what you're going to want to you're not going to want to do that that's for certain goodness me I swear, XSplit's got more difficult to use. So, you're going to be opening up this, which is your resource manager. And what you want to do is, any of the stuff you want to have in, so for example, your summon, which is like I've done here, you've got to make it as transparent as possible, so that you can um, obviously put it in and there's no sort of white borders around like this one is. I've actually done a, a far better version of Odin on my other one. So, um, you know... It just it can take a while to do with some, especially when you've got pencil drawing ones. But anything else, like vector ones and all that sort of stuff, will be totally, you know, will be far easier to do. And then also any animations that you want to put in custom as well. I've only used the stuck ones that come with the game so far, so I've not had to add any of them in. But as you can see, they are done like that, which you probably can't see because uh, Xbox probably not recorded that. Beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, you just need to add them in and put that in beforehand and also if you want any sound effects as well that'll have to obviously go in the sound effect file I believe it can I believe that they can be any audio type as well so you know mp3 and everything else will be fine just make sure they're supported first obviously I'm not sure about any of the iTunes specific formats myself right so once that's done and everything's in you then need to open up your database that means I need to flick over to the database screen, which will open up this, which is your database, obviously. And it will start on the actors page. And so the first thing you need to do is, for the summon, you need to make an animation. So here, which is obviously it's called Odin, because Odin is the summon that I'm going to be showing you in this one. And in the graphic options, that's where you'll put in the graphic of the summon picture of it and also any other graphics you want to use so as you can see they're down here which is the that's part of the tile set of it so you might just make a custom one if you want all sorts of different you know you might just add a couple together it's a, it is fairly easy enough to do um we'll probably take a little bit of research to uh, to do though and also obviously you've got to make sure that the summon is also the right size as well Anyway, so now this is the sort of um, log of how the summon goes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you it first and then um, I'm going to discuss it with you about how it is done. So as you can see, it's com this comprised of 173 frames, this particular summon. You are, I mean, it is going to take a lot if you want to do anything complicated with it. Uh, with you know with the summon so let's play it and uh, let's hopefully the audio will work as well oh no it's scratched okay now that does happen i don't know why i think maybe there's too many frames in there for it which is unfortunate but what i'm going to do is instead i will just do a battle test which is going to be really loud so Bear with me while I do that. Let's um, let's just have uh, Ella in there and no one else. 
she's the summoner. And let's very quickly load that up so you guys can see it. As you can see, I put in a custom text as well on there and sorted out the MP and everything else. So It's not perfect and it won't always line up perfectly, but it is what it is. So what I've actually done on a couple of the other ones, or a couple of the other enemies, is I've actually lined them up to be more in the middle, I believe, the ones I've actually changed. Yeah, they are generally, you know, on a big group, it looks a lot better. And on the main bosses or on the bosses, it looks a lot better as well. But anyway, that's just the fundamentals of it. I've um, already um, done that. So, yes. <clears throat> I'm trying to think how best to describe this now, which is quite awkward. Um, you got to remember that each frame is, you know, one frame is nothing of a second, you know. It, I mean, I think, what have I decided to do? I've decided to... Oh, goodness me. Uh, when does it change? So, yeah, I mean, I've done 28 frames. So, basically, because obviously it runs at 30 frames a second, so you obviously got to think about that. So, basically, almost each second he moves position on here. So this is the, I mean, you can see there's not, for all of those frames, there's not a lot of changes that I've actually made. So this one here says frame number one, and that's the bell sound. So that's the first bell sound that you hear. And then you have him moving. So on uh, frame 29, the target disappears. So the enemies, because he obviously targets all, they disappear. And then the bell chimes again. And he moves to a different location on the on the screen. Let's get, let's get 29 up. So he moves there. The screen also changes, also goes dark as well, or fades. And then at scene 59, the same thing happens again. He moves, but, um, but the target is unhidden because it goes. And then at scene 88, the target's hidden again, and he moves. And it's, basically, I've just copied it around, but I've moved him to a different location. Um, and obviously, the bells chime. So I think the only major difference when it actually clocks in is that 117 is back to his starting position with the enemy showing. So <clears throat> then you have to... The next bit is the, most, is the more, more, more complicated bit. So I've got him moving on that scene. But also, I'm using the attack number three um, special effect. So that will go across, or start going across the enemy. And then, as he moves across, although, as you can see here, the frame carries on as he's, effect as it, he's effectively running across, doing dealing damage to the enemy. Well, that's what it's meant to be anyway. Um, and then, obviously... The rest of it is just the effect, the final effect coming off. So it is quite a delicate process. I mean, you do have to really bear with it. You can change the targets as well and everything. You know, if you want to, you know, test out how you've how you position your uh, your enemies. So you could do all sorts of stuff, and you can obviously mess mess it up like I've just done now. And <laughs> and now remember not to save the game, or otherwise it will stay that way. So. There's lots of other things you can do as well. You can change the colour of the screen, you can dim it, you can make it lighter. And once you've played and messed around with that and you're happy with how your animation looks, you then need to go in and actually create create the attack. So if you already know how to do this in the skills, then probably not worth watching the rest of the video because I'm just going to be going through basic stuff now in order to get it working. So this is the bit where you will actually make it appear in the game and do its attack damage and everything else like that. So the name, obviously I've called it Odin, 
it's going to go into the summon skill type so you will have to create a skill type called summon and I'm trying to remember where that is that's in in here so in the skill types you then have to create a new one called summon you just change the maximum one and then add it in and then you'll need to go on to your uh, classes so I've got summoner and you have to add in the skill type of summon and that will add it into the attack menu so it's all quite I mean it's all quite simple from this this stage then you want to put in your description obviously you know whatever you want it to be your icon so I've said it as red because you know sort of I sort of gone with the sort of red materia from Final Fantasy 7 not that system but that way of differentiating it so you can obviously tell it to summon if you wanted to you can make your own little logo of the or icon sorry of the summon if you want to do it that way and then you obviously select the skill type of summon choose whatever MP cost or technique point cost that you want it to be you also choose what the scope is so obviously Odin will attack all enemies you can have it random as well which is quite cool and you're going to want to select only in battle because unless it's a heal I suppose if you did a healing summon you know you could have that work outside of battle as well you know that would probably be quite neat of an idea to be honest to do it that way and then you're going to want to create the attack as it is so my one it is 100% it's a certain hit only hits once he deals obviously you can click on the quick and it will do it for you you can also change it to your own um, liking and then the effect so mine is death he always hits but he, and he always does a certain amount of damage regardless of whether he causes death or not so on this one he deals death 75% of the time I'm going to tweak you know that's just in his placeholder I will probably tweak that uh, in a different way if you wanted to do it so that only a certain staff could summon a certain summon you could have that here in the required weapon so only one weapon would allow you to summon Odin I don't you know that might be another idea to do for your summons I suppose and then what you what you can do is as well in this case because obviously Odin is a bit overpowered which he's meant to be when it comes to I'd say sort of like smaller enemies when it comes to bosses what you can do if you so desire is you can change you know the bosses to have a resistance to death so on this one um, I think that pretty sure that means that death in he never you can't kill him with a death attack so in that case if you were to summon Odin he would only deal his whatever his damage is on here so 400 attack times 8 and then um, to the magic power of the summoner so which is a really good way of doing the summons because obviously they can scale up with the power of the summoner as well which I think is is better is good um, whereas I believe if you do a Final Fantasy 10 style summon I'm um, just digressing here they will actually become a main actor and it will actually summon the main actor in rather than an actual rather than it being an actual summon so effectively the summons will level up the more they used which also might be a good idea I don't know I'll leave it up to you guys hopefully this has helped you though um, the animation thing can be a bit tricky I mean it does it does take a long time to you know even just do a basic one like I've done and that I've showed you but it really is worth messing around with it and it really is quite rewarding I mean obviously my one's not perfect because you know the enemy has to be right in the middle of the screen for it to work or the enemies um, it doesn't look so bad when there's lots of enemies and there's a whole troop of enemies because it actually makes more sense then. Um, because obviously you can have the animation, you can have the enemies flash and everything, but the animations that you place on the screen, they revolve in that particular section of the screen anyway. I'm, once again, I'm blabbering now. But anyway, if you have any questions regarding this, please put them in the comments. I'll try my best to get back to you about it. Um, if there's something more fundamental and technical that I've missed out, I'll probably just do another video because it's a lot more, it's far more easy to explain over a video while I've got it in front of me so you guys can see it as well rather than me trying to write it out and explain it. And you know, that is, can be really difficult at times. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been helpful. And I, well, if uh, something else is asked for quite a lot and I've used it myself and I know how to do it, then I will do another video on it. Anyway guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon.
Goodbye.